So it's, it's the eight day land tour. And uh, this is on, if you have your catalog, it's under Winter Wonderland. And this hotel is actually the hotel in Girdwood where you'll be staying the last two nights of your trip. It's south of Anchorage and it's just a beautiful hotel that you'll really enjoy. So uh, you're flying into Alaska and uh, I can't uh, talk enough about uh, the views off the plane, either the right side or the left side as you're flying into Alaska. It's simply gorgeous. The clear skies, the, the glaciers that you're going to see, the mountaintops, it's absolutely stunning. So uh, don't lock your camera too far away from, from you on the way up. So you're going to fly into the city of Fairbanks. And Fairbanks is a, what we call as our northernmost city in Alaska. Um, big city, if you will. It's only got 40,000 people, but that's considered a big city in Alaska. Uh, so you're going to stay at Sophie Station the first night, and uh, you can see this is one of our guests with their John Hall's Alaska going in, and uh, so we'll overnight. It's a very comfortable hotel. You can relax in the lobby, and this is the inner layer of that jacket. You probably all have your jackets already if you're going this year, but this is the inner layer. The outer layer uh, goes over the top of that. This has your name on it and, and our logo. Uh, the other one has Alaska on the back of it as well. So it's a very comfortable lobby, you can relax. Um, that night, um, we're gonna have Frank uh, Stavlis is gonna give us a, a, a seminar on how to photograph Northern Lights and how to use your camera. Um, I can't stress enough uh, to, to attend this because you're gonna have some just incredible evenings with the Northern Lights. And this will, you'll be able to capture the most perfect images uh, when you listen to Frank and, he, Frank and he'll go through, it's about, it's about 45 minutes to an hour and he'll answer all your questions for you, et cetera. So the next morning after breakfast, we're gonna head out to the Trailbreaker Kettle. And this is the home of the late Susan Butcher, the four time I did a rod winner. <clears throat> this is Susan's husband, Dave. And uh, Susan, unfortunately we lost to lymphomic cancer in about 2007, 2008. Uh, but uh, Dave is still here and the two daughters uh, are there to help. Uh, you'll meet uh, uh, Tecla, one, one of his daughters. She'll be uh, with you in the uh, uh, all your adventures out here. So, and of course, this is our motor coach in the background. And uh, we're gonna take you on dog sled. Uh, will you be bundled up well? Uh, it's really a great experience to be able to do that. Um, it's just an uh, uh, incredible experience. If, you're, if you've never done it and you've always wanted to do something, this is just a fun, a fun time. Now, if you're, not, if you're not on the sleds, you're welcome to be inside. Uh, um, he's got hot chocolate coffee in his home that he opens up to us. But it's, it's really a great uh, experience uh, doing this. This is what they call a flat tire on dog sledding teams. So uh, they decided to lay down evidently. <laughs> they were on strike, but they just, um, they wanted to play around a little bit. But this is Dave's home right in the back. So uh, you can, uh, this is the kind of the, the great room, if you will. Um, there's big windows. You can watch everybody going by, or you can stay outside and watch uh, as well. So uh, uh, after we do the dog sled, we'll go over, over to the puppies. So you get to play with the puppies hold them and I uh, can't take one home because everybody wants to, but uh, it'll give you a great chance. Again, <clears throat> these are the, uh, the outer shell of the jacket. They'll have uh, the logo on here and then John, or it'll have Alaska on the back. The interior of the jacket liner uh, will have your name on it. Uh, this is Dave's daughter, Tecla, and Tecla will be uh, kind of introducing you to uh, uh, what her mother did and how she won the Iditarod four times. She should have won it five times, but a moose attacked and, and took out a couple of her dogs. Um, and I don't remember what year that was, 89, 88, 89, I think. Um, but, 88, um, hey, Dad. Yes. Uh, the Just the one thing I wanted to, to bring up regarding this, with COVID this year, we're not going to be going inside Dave's house. Oh, good so, to know. 
I just, just wanted to pass that along. We've done that in the past, uh, but we are going to be doing an outdoor only presentation, which is what we've typically done. But then after dog sledding, we go back inside. So it's just one of the minor tweaks, but I think most people can understand why Dave doesn't want, you know, the whole, the whole group inside his house. Um, so those are some of the things that we've had to deal with, but uh, I can assure you that they're, you know, very minor. Um, but yeah, we will, we won't be going inside Dave's house this year. Okay. So, thank you. For, uh, thank you for telling me that. This, but this is one of uh, uh, Susan's trophies from the 86 uh, that she won. Uh, also uh, we, every year we, uh, in our evaluations, uh, throughout the summer, from usually from the 1st of June up till the uh, end of September, uh, we compile all of the people's uh, comments from their uh, evaluations. And at the end of the year, we tally up all the totals for the, for the best attraction, the best breakfast, the best lunch, the best dinner, uh, the best Alaskan experience. And Dave has consistently won an award since... 2014, I believe this was. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, there's a void because we didn't go up in 20. So, but uh, it, it's really a great, uh, uh, a great experience that you'll have at Trail Break the Kettle. Uh, again, that's Dave with a, a couple of our clients. And again, they have their liner on, uh, they're holding the jacket because it was actually warm. These liners are, are considerably warmer than you think they are. Uh, so uh, you won't freeze to death, we promise. So uh, we're going to overnight again at, uh, uh, or excuse me, we'll head from uh, from Fairbanks north up to the Borealis Base Camp. And that'll be your home for the next two nights. Uh, this is our motor coach. Uh, uh, and I think Joe took this one under the Northern Lights, uh, what you can expect uh, all the way from Fairbanks, uh, all the way down to uh, uh, Girdwood. So uh, you're going to spend two nights in these domes uh, at Borealis Base Camp, and they're they're uh, they're all self-contained. So they've got beds. They actually have toilets in them. Uh, they have uh, uh, what do they call plexiglass dome or windows in them, so you can actually lay in bed and look right up at the at the northern lights, so you don't have to get up at two o'clock in the morning, get dressed, and go outside. Uh, I would highly recommend going outside and getting some pictures if the if their northern lights are really brilliant uh, so you're in the perfect area for it uh, all we need is cooperation from mother nature uh, obviously if there's a lot of clouds in the sky we can't see the stars like this but on clear nights there's they're just spectacular so this is two nights that you're you're going to be able to uh, uh, stay in these domes and actually uh, enjoy the, the northern lights. Um, also, the sunsets are pretty spectacular. Right? Uh, do they set around six, seven o'clock, Joe, at that time of the year? Or is it a little later? Yeah, we're <clears throat> so kind of one of the interesting things about this tour is you're going to gain almost an hour of daylight in the eight days that you're in uh, the state because we're gaining so much back so quickly. This is actually a sunrise picture, but um, yeah, it's, uh, we're about 17 miles outside of, uh, Fairbanks, which, uh, Fairbanks is in a low lying area and they always have air quality issues there because, uh, of the heating oil they burn there. It all kinds of, kind of sits in the bowl and there's no, uh, no wind. So this is a, a perfect place. Even being just 17 miles or even five miles outside of Fairbanks can make all the difference between having clear weather and having uh, foggy weather. But yeah, we're, we're looking at about 12 and a half, 13 hours of daylight during this time frame. Perfect. Yeah, it's a great day. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you told me this was sunrise rather than sunset. So that's obviously facing east. All so I know is, is I took it. So I, the, <laughs> the light you see there was uh, somebody getting up and getting ready for the morning. So perfect. Yeah. So these are the interior of the uh, of the domes, if you will. So they uh, uh, have uh, right up here in the at the top. That's the uh, the plexiglass, so you can lay in bed and look right up at the uh, at the lights. Uh, they also have some rather unique. People ask me, how do you 
flush toilets when it's 35 or 40 below. Um, I don't know who came up with this, but here's how they work. Now, you can take that home and, and show it to your friends. That's, uh, that's interesting. I've never seen anything like that, but it's, uh, it works. It's absolutely perfect. So uh, uh, during the daytime, there's a lot of activities. Uh, you could do snowmobiling out there. Uh, the pipeline runs right up through there, so you can see that. Uh, get photographed on it. It's really some beautiful area in that, uh, in that terrain. Uh, also, you can go uh, snowshoeing. Uh, they'll furnish you the snowshoes and the poles. Um, it's, it's just really a lot of fun. Uh, so your days, you've got all the activities in the days. And then at night, um, you have the, uh, the northern light viewing. So there, the restaurant uh, is all self-contained. There's a restaurant and kind of a, um, a popular area right in here uh, for you to gather. And the dining is... Uh, really neat. So you're, you're right in the same facility uh, where your uh, domes are. So you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner served out here in the uh, self-contained uh, dining room, if you will. So then after two days there, we're going to board the motor coach and head south. So we're crossing the uh, Tanana River here at, I uh, uh, can't think of the, the name of the, this bridge is offhand, but uh, we're headed south down to Talkeet now. So we're going to check into the Talkeetna Lodge. This is a beautiful lodge and this great big fireplace here. And that's all glass windows that overlook uh, Denali. So uh, uh, we'll come and go in to relax. Uh, they have a, a bar set up in the lobby for you. So you can have cocktails and wine and beer, et cetera, while you're looking out over the uh, landscape. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So that's Denali right there and Mount Foraker and Mount Hunter right there. So it's uh, kind of uh, kind of neat. Our whole group was, was there together in the lobby and uh, just had an enjoyable afternoon. Uh, you can relax, play cards, uh, go out hiking, walking. Um, and and the, of course, can't, can't talk about the, the chocolate cake. I mean, that's, uh, that's a story in itself. So you'll, uh, you'll have great meals on this whole trip. It's really wonderful. And of course, the, the views of Denali you're going to get from there. There's a big deck right behind the uh, Talkeetna Lodge. And that overlooks all of the mountains. So that's the Alaska Range. There's Mount Foraker, Mount Hunter, uh, and Denali right there in the middle. Just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and of course, at night, you're still going to be able to view the northern lights. Um, the next morning, we're going to take you on a two and a half hour flight scene trip. And you're going to fly around the Denali, Mount Hunter, Moose's Tooth Pass, and land up on the glacier. And that's really a great experience. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure which glacier you're going to land on yet. Uh, but if you, if you go to the Kinnick Glacier, uh, that's where this photo was taken on Kinnick Glacier. And that's one of the, uh, the caves at Pinnick Glacier. As you can see, that blue ice is just absolutely incredible. Uh, just a, a wonderful day. So then we'll come back to the hotel. Uh, this, again, is the Northern Lights right over Denali. So it's right there off the, uh, the patio, right in the back of the, uh, the lot. You could also go into town, into uh, um, Talkeetna, these are some more photos of the, of the Northern Lights in that area. Uh, one of our clients with the Northern Lights in the background. And if you want to walk downtown or shuttle downtown, if you will, um, Talkeetna is really a neat little town. It's actually the city um, that, or the town that uh, Northern Exposure, if you remember that old uh, television series, uh, that was actually written about Talkeetna wasn't filmed here, it was filmed in Washington. But um, last year when these pictures were taken, they had a, a lot of snow, <laughs> a lot of snow in Talkeetna. Uh, and Joe could attest to that, he had to drive through it. But there's some really neat places to go. The Fairview Inn uh, is a bar and uh, a saloon, if you will. It's really fun. But there's a lot of unique little uh, little shops uh, in there. It's uh, it's kind of a quaint, really a quaint, one-of-a-kind 
uh, little visits uh, to make in Alaska. So uh, this was kind of a, a neat picture that uh, somebody actually took the video of this uh, with, the, with the moose walking uh, uh, right down the parking lot. And then they saw him right between uh, two uh, the car and the van. And then this one, uh, some people took this right from right from the uh, windows of the, the, the lobby uh, of the Talkeetna Lodge. So they had a moose that actually came up uh, right on the uh, right on the patio. So there's a, a lot of activities. So you, you know when you when you go on this trip, you have to think young. Uh, you can't. You, you're out of the rocking chair and the knitting. Put the put the knitting needles away and bring out the, your youth. Uh, this is a sliding a sled area sliding um, that goes way down the hill here. It comes all the way back down here, and that's what these people are doing is they're sledding down there. You can just see them down at the bottom there, right there. Then they pull their thing back up and do it again. Uh, you can also have a snowball fight right in front of uh, Denali. Um, this one I, I love, uh, this one. Um, uh, they were making snow angels. And <laughs> my question is, when they get done with this, how in the hell do they get up? <laughs> because I couldn't. There's no way. Somebody would have to help me up. But like I said, you have to think young. Have fun on this trip because you're, you're going to have some experiences that you'll never have in your lifetime. Again, like I said, last year, there was a lot of snow up there. And I, I don't know, Joe, is there a lot of snow this year? Do you know what the forecast is? There's quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> we have about the same amount in Anchorage and Talkeetna usually gets more. A um, couple of the buses, not our buses, but the roofs caved in last year because of the snow. So um, I don't know, uh, but it, it changes. And, and you'll see that on this tour through all the places that we go. It's going to vary, you know, every 50, 60 miles could be more or less. And the same thing, uh, the snowstorms driving through them, they usually don't last the entire duration of uh, a day, but you know, they might last for a, a section of your road. So, but we're used to it. All you folks down South, don't worry. Yeah, rest assured, Joe's been driving this, I think for six or seven years. Yeah, uh, we used to, when we used to, drive all the way up the, the hall road to the Arctic Circle and the motor coaches, which we do not do anymore just because it's, you know, if we do have an issue, uh, we're a long ways away from help. So we do that with uh, planes rather than going up the road. So uh, yeah, it's, but no problem. But Joe, yeah, you don't have to worry about a thing. Joe's got plenty of experience driving in this condition. So, uh, so after two days in Talkeetna, uh, we're going to head south down to Anchorage uh, and a little south of Anchorage down to Girdwood. And Girdwood is uh, the uh, uh, the only four-star hotel in the state of Alaska. And that's uh, uh, that's the Alaska Resort. It is also home of the uh, only downhill, big downhill ski area. In fact, they had the Winter uh, Special Olympics there 15, 18 years ago, somewhere in there. But the hotel is really gorgeous. Uh, this is the main lobby. Uh, as you see it here, they got a polar bear up on, on top here. Uh, some, uh, I think those are humpback whales uh, there. But uh, just gorgeous uh, accommodations. And the hotel rooms are especially large, uh, airy. Uh, so you're going to spend two nights at this property. Now, when you're here, Everything is included. If you want to go skiing, uh, we provide uh, a full day lift tickets, uh, rentals, everything for you. Uh, it's all included. Uh, you can also do, uh, this is the, the uh, downhill ski area. This, you're looking here, this is uh, Turnigan Arm. Uh, but of course it's uh, frozen now at the time of year. But it's uh, a beautiful view from up here. Uh, so if you're gonna go wanna do some skiing, uh, you can do that for the day. Or you can go, uh, again, uh, 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 snowshoeing if you'd like. That's all provided, the equipment is provided. Or if you don't want to do that, you can spend the day at the spa. Uh, so that's, uh, you've got a full free day of activities to do whatever you'd like uh, and then uh, relax. The next morning after breakfast, we're going to take you back to Anchorage 
and you'll uh, board your plane or if you're staying overnight an extra night uh, we'll have the take you to your accommodation 